tonight, potential tropical cyclone One L is struggling but continuing to produce heavy rain across portions of Cuba, Florida, and the Bahama where warnings remain in effect. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for June 4th. Well, we are at another day in June, and it's practically the same picture as yesterday. Potential tropical cyclone 1L has still not become a tropical cyclone, and retains that PTC designation with 27 storms still being the count for this year. As of today, 92 storms is the average for the worldwide season. It's day 4 of Atlantic hurricane season, 1L remains with a 90% chance of formation. While 92L is a thing with a 10% chance of formation, although those chances look to be decreasing with all convection having disappeared uh, over the last few hours here. Going in over into the Eastern Pacific, it is day 21 of Eastern Pacific season and there is also nothing going on here and nothing expected in the next five days and that's practically going to be the pattern uh, for the next week to week and a half uh, more than likely. In Eastern Pacific, it is dead after 94W's complete and utter failure. It was only an invest for a day, and as soon as it was attacked as an invest, it completely died, so good riddance. No one wanted you here anyways, but we are tracking for the potential for a monsoon mess in about a week and a half. We'll see what ends up happening with that. With the North Indian Ocean, it's basically the same thing that I've been saying in practically every bulletin that I've made so far this year. We're past the peak, there's nothing going on. Yada yada yada, there's nothing expected in the next five days. I really don't need to be going much into this at this point. It's past the first peak, there's nothing expected for a few months. In the Atlantic, you can see a potential tropical cyclone 1L as it continues to uh, pass to the north of Cuba in preparation for its landfall in Florida tomorrow. You can also see 92L to the northeast of that, it's to the southwest of Bermuda. Convection pretty much disappearing off of that over the last few hours. Looking to the eastern Pacific, you can see that it's kind of a mess still in the eastern side of things, given the Central American Gyre. To the west of that, it is practically not much of anything going on. There's some disturbances near the ITCZ, but other than that, it's not much of anything that's going to be uh, splitting off and developing anytime soon. So, conditions looking pretty unfavorable for anything in the near future, at least for this area. Looking at the western Pacific, you can see what's going on here. Uh, no evidence that 94W was ever a thing, really, uh, given the fact that it is completely dissipated. The only thing really being a frontal system uh, that has been traversing across um, China and pretty much exit the coast of Japan about 24 to 36 hours ago. In the North Indian Ocean, you can see what's going on here. Uh, same as usual, really. Bay of Magal being a bit of a mess with some monsoonal activity going on. Raven Sea looking, for the most part, pretty dry. And then, of course, you can see what's going on with potential tropical cyclone 1L. It's looking pretty dreadful. Still no well-defined center, but regardless, it's going to continue to bring heavy rain and gusty winds across the Bahamas, Florida, and Cuba over the next uh, 24 hours. More than likely, it's expected to make landfall some day uh, on, on Saturday afternoon. You can see what's going on with the sea surface temperatures. There are definitely that more noticeable divot left behind by Agatha with a little bit of 27 degrees Celsius temperatures near where it may landfall. Other than that, the basin remains around 28 to 29. Gulf of Mexico is around 27 to 28. Same thing for the Caribbean, and same thing for the main development region. It's around 27 to 28 there. Pretty much looking okay for 1L if it reemerges into the Western Atlantic with the intent to actually form, because it's starting to look like, I mean, at this point, there is a chance that 1L doesn't form uh, before making landfall. In the North Indian Ocean, you can see what's going on. Uh, 30 degrees Celsius temperatures in the Arabian Sea. It's around 28 to 29 in the Bay of Bengal. Same can be said as you head into the Western Pacific, although we're starting to notice a significant expansion of those 30 degrees Celsius temperatures to the east of the Philippines. That is going to be something worth noting, just in case anything tries to be popping up there. If the conditions are right, then we could be seeing uh, something interesting there. But for right now, conditions remain unfavorable, so we shouldn't have to be worrying about that. The rest of the Western Pacific is around 28 to 29, so definitely warm waters regardless. Here are the sea surface temperature anomalies. We have that weak uh, La Nina in effect right now. Much of the Eastern Pacific is average to below average. Atlantic is looking generally above average. And the Western Pacific is looking above average for the most part as well. North Indian Ocean 
Um, Bay Bengal is starting to look below average, and Raven Sea is looking generally above. On this day, the 1995 Atlantic hurricane season was really kicking off with its first hurricane, Hurricane Allison. It would peak as a minimal Category 1 before making landfall in Florida the following day. We also had Tropical Storm Deanna uh, that was making a bit of an erratic track to the northwest of the Philippines at this point. It was performing a loop before it would eventually curve back to the northeast. Of course, 1995 would be the beginning of the hyperactive era as considered by many meteorologists. Of course, you can find more of our On This Day products powered by Cycle and History. Um, you can find their Twitter at the tag below. And that brings us over to the next name, as if 1L can get itself together, the next name of the Atlantic is Alex, followed by Pawnee. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking after Gloss and Celia. And in the Central Pacific, always remember that we're never gonna give you Hone, even if it lets you down, even if you run around, the hopes have deserted you. Yes, you just got Hone Rickrolled, congratulations. In the Western Pacific, we're looking out for Chaba, followed by Airi. And in the North Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Citre and Mandis. Two names we're probably not going to be seeing for quite some time, given the fact we're not in season anymore. Moving on over into the Southern Hemisphere, we have Darien up next to the Australian region. We have until the end of the month to get Lama in the southwestern Indian Ocean, and the next name in the South Pacific is Holly. We'll be back for another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night.